Good evening, calling together the uh, Board of the uh, Technology Commission meeting for Wednesday, September 22nd. It is 6 p.m. Um, we have a roll call. I'm not sure we'll do questions. Uh, Greg Strunk. The web is not here. Bill Volusia. Present. Uh, James Rayberger. Present. Keith Strunk is not here. Norma Kesson. Here. John Hardy. Present. Uh, just before is not here. And we'll say the Trident Legion. The flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next item on the agenda is the citizen comment period. We have no citizens in the audience, so removal of the August 26th, 26, excuse me, minute meetings, minute meeting minutes. I'm back with the slide. Um, have anybody read them? Some minutes as they were written. All right, Norm has Norm has made a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. Thank you. All those in favor of passing the minutes as written, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Minutes are approved. Next item is the strategic technology plan. It's okay, we're back finally again to the strategic technology plan. Uh, one of the biggest challenges that we're going to find now uh, as we move from our typical structure of talking about the archetype goals and objectives, now we're actually turning around of talking about the archetype goals and objectives, now we're actually turning around and moving to the much finer grained uh, elements of the plan, which is uh, the strategies and the activities. And this then becomes fairly much the meat and potatoes of the, the entire technology, uh, strategic technology, the meat and potatoes of the, the entire technology, uh, strategic technology plan. There's always a danger, as I was alluding to earlier, that you can always get stuck in the mud, that there's a lot of material uh, to turn around and go through. And this is probably where we're gonna find where things start becoming a little bit more dated. Things start becoming a little bit more dated in the plan. This was written back in 2007. Uh, prior to me being here, I'd say probably from 2007 all the way to 2016, none of these strategic objectives or activities were actually performed. A variety of reasons for that. Probably the biggest one is there, there was large gaps of even having an IT manager uh, during that time period where the person who was running the help desk was also functioning in the role of IT manager of it, and I'm not even sure if that person at that time was even aware of the strategic tech to turn around and actually found it from it. Uh, so there wasn't really any action taken on a lot of these strategies and uh, activities until you actually had a, a more formal managerial presence uh, actually on the site. So if we, look at the if we look at the strategic technology plan in its entirety, there are several plans that are alluded to um, within the activities and the, the strategies. And some of these uh, were written, uh, I should say I wrote, wrote a couple of them. Uh, once I actually, written, uh, I should say I wrote, wrote a couple of them uh, once I actually saw these, but I know prior to me being here, none of these plans were actually formally written to f help further, de uh, uh, not decompose, <laughs> further solidify the activities and what is actually being done uh, in focusing done uh, in focusing uh, IT operations towards the actual <coughs> strategy. Um, as written in the plan, uh, we have requested the technology infrastructure plan. And if I would be doing this today, as we will be looking at this out, I would actually take the strategic compute, storage, and network. Those probably are going to have different uh, activities that you're going to be doing through it. I think putting it all into one large massive plan would be a little encumbersome and splitting it out into individual components would, would probably be 
than having a mass of documents. Um, there's also the application and hosted services plan, a security plan, uh, a data classification uh, and storage plan, which if I was going to create a storage plan itself as part of technology infrastructure, I would probably recommend not even, sure, I would probably recommend not even doing that one. You would already have those goals built into what you would be doing through the main storage plan. Uh, they call for an emergency management plan, which is their disaster recovery plan. Uh, and then some that I would say that I would have liked to see in the document that was some that I would say that I would have liked to see in the document that wasn't in there at all uh, would be to incorporate some form of a risk management plan. Nowhere in this entire document did it ever talk about addressing, recognizing, and managing risk. Uh, or actually having mobile device and communication, or actually having mobile device and communication plan. Uh, they pretty much ignored the telephone and ignored all the PBXs. And that's a core piece of operation here within the city. That I understand that in 2007, the iPhone uh, was just starting to come into vogue. You still miss a smartphones back in 2007 that we do today. I, I can ignore not having that element into the plan uh, at that time, but I think nowadays we would probably want to see something of that nature folded into this, into this new plan. Mm -hmm. Just for clarification, it will be um, specific, correct? Uh, compute network application post to meeting one security data, maybe a combined classification and storage disaster recovery separate plan and risk management plan and mobile device plan, is that correct? Correct. So those will be actual documents that correct. eventually will come out. Documents that correct. eventually will come out. So um, but, as we go into the goal section yeah. of the next goal, goal number one, I actually break out some of these plans already in there, mm -hmm. and I formally address it in the goals within section number one. Mm -hmm. Hopefully not screwing up the numbering convention. In the goals within section number one. Mm -hmm. Hopefully not screwing up the numbering convention. The only, the only uh, little bit of a eye opener was storage plan and data classification being combined, or is that separate? I would actually put data classification into the storage plan, even though you're talking about network storage, what you want to do with your SANs. Even though you're talking about network storage, what you want to do with your SANs. Are you going to do it on premise? Are you going to do it in cloud? As part of that, you're going to want to have some metrics behind it. So you're going to have to classify your data in order to know how you're going to turn around and build out your next plan. For example, if I was going to be building out or recommending a new over at the police department, I'm going to want to know what video they have, what type of video they have, what their retention policies are. How can you even begin creating a storage environment if you don't even know that information? Understood. So that, that would have to probably be built right folded into the storage plan itself. Again, the uh, organizational structure of what I normally would see in higher level building out a formalization of what IT strategy and how you encompass it. There are normally a set of four separate documents. And this is the University of Wisconsin, University of Wisconsin Milwaukee's uh, in their IT management course. And when you turn, start building out uh, and, and creating a library of documents codifying your IT vision, what do you normally have? And the first would be your strategic plans or your vision plans, uh, where you look at your enterprise goal and where you want to try to turn or your vision plans, uh, where you look at your enterprise goal and where you want to try to turn around and attain a capital advantage, very important for private and public companies, uh, or how do you turn around and actually attain the operational efficiency? So those higher level plans would be formulated as strategy documents. Then underneath that, you formulated as strategy documents. Then underneath that, you would have policies. So you're decomposing each archetype goal into more strategic objectives. And how the objectives are is to be accomplished is normally not specified. Uh, and you try to turn around and make this as vendor agnostic or even uh, pro probably can. Um, you aren't going to turn around and get into the detail, but still you're going to try to want to refine further what you're trying to accomplish within your vision. Then you actually have your plans themselves, and these are children of the policies. And this is more of a decomposition of your policy objectives 
these will then be put in, and these are always going to be project or, or technology focused. Included in the plan quite often is your standards and procedures. You can reference these as separate documents, but you also you always want to have your, your policies and your standards referenced and folded into the actual plan itself, the actual plan itself. And this would be a specification of which technologies that are to be implemented and used in the organization. Uh, the standards will include features, capabilities, and usage requirements. Standard operating procedures can also be included on the utilization of the technology within the organization itself. Also be included on the utilization of the technology within the organization itself. And the most fine granular uh, document that is created is actually the installation specific documentation that's normally either created within the run books or within the li uh, documentation library uh, within the server or engineering group or within the li uh, documentation library uh, within the server or engineering group itself uh, that also may include manuals and that would be application or technology specific installation or configuration structure. So it always is at least as taught by the university system, strategy, policy, plans, and processes are included in standards and procedures? Yes. In standard operating procedures, so yes, you would put the SOPs processes. into the, the standards document. You may want to highlight that. Yeah. So if I was going to create a plan, what would I normally include? In the request plans, what should the plan have, and that would be a statement of vision, a reiteration of the goals and objectives. Uh, from your needs analysis, you're going to stress both your current needs and any emergent needs that may be needed by the organization. Any regulation or compliance goals, then you also have your plan standards. You can put them into the plan itself, or you can turn around and, and fold all your, your standards and operating procedures as separate documents. Uh, you'll have management platforms and uh, I2 tools that you may need to do to manage the environment. Any KPI metrics or critical success to implementation of that platform. Uh, resources and organizational roles. How are you going to structure the people that are going to build and manage this thing? Any education or specialized skills. That's very important if you're going to have to bring in additional people and recruit to help uh, install the new, new technology. Uh, an assessment inventory architecture uh, and any form of diagrams. Hopefully a gap analysis of how you're going to take the current environment and transform it into your proposed environment. And then any re-evaluation or uh, reassessment of the actual plan. That's what I, I normally uh, within these documents. Doesn't say I normally uh, within these documents. Doesn't say that you have to create a plan that way. It's what I've normally encountered. And then when we look at the reference standards document, again, statement of vision, goals and objectives, here we'll actually have scope where the uh, standard or procedure may apply and where it may not have scope, where the uh, standard or procedure may apply and where it may not be applying within the organization, any technology and or business requirements, any management or operational requirements. And then you want to actually state very clearly, this is the standard, this is our standard equipment, our platform, our application, our cloud service provider. With that information, you'll probably want to include which models or any specific uh, uh, features and the standard cost of those features have to be included in, in uh, with that particular model that you hopefully will be buying again and again and again. Uh, what's the expected lifespan of the equipment? Uh, any exceptions to those use cases, which is very useful when we're talking about applications. Uh, any standard configuration procedures, uh, which would be your standard config for the, for the device, any standard operating procedures in the device, and then again, re-evaluation and reassessment. That's typically what associated probably the most logical standards that would put into the plan. I came up with 35 of them. And the first question is, how many of these already exist? And I can say about one-third. The simple fact is you cannot train your IT team, train your IT team uh, without them. For example, I, I gave uh, a brief for the meeting, a, a brief synopsis. So before I came here, we had three different standards on how to name servers and, and computers and user accounts. 
In the police department, we are using one standard for the computers and user accounts. In the police department, we are using one standard for the badge number. In the fire department, we are using a completely different one. Over here at City Hall, we are using a completely different one. When you try to turn around and invoke change, when you have all these different naming conventions going on all at the same time, particularly with computers, particularly with computers, the computers, it was at whim of what they actually wanted to do it. It became very, very, very difficult to turn around and figure out what was what and who was who, let alone try to turn around and group things together uh, and implement group policy changes on items. So one of the first things we had to do was name them the same thing so we aren't having all these different naming conventions. Well, out comes the naming conventions document for that. So the team now knows, all right, this is how we as the City of Franklin IT team is going to start naming our user accounts and devices on the network. This document had to turn around and get changed. So over the course of years, we have about a third, maybe a little bit more than that, of these already written. All I have to do is some reformatting, maybe insert a few more sections of, of information, and some of them are already ready to go uh, at this point. So that's the good news on it uh, at this point. So that's the good news on it. The bad news is if I had my dithers and was going to turn around and start folding the standards into the, the actual plans, there's a lot of them. And it is a small mountain of documentation to turn around and write. Um, mountain of documentation to turn around and write. Um, so if we actually went along that line, how many documents are we actually talking that's going to compose the basic IT library? That's going to be this document plus six STP plans, six STP plans, 35 standard documents uh, for reference uh, standard operating procedures, and then 14 NIST security documents. Um, how are you going to accomplish that? It's a lot of information. And if I would create a book as you go in a restaurant, that in a restaurant you just don't turn around and decide at the end of the night to turn around and clean up your entire workstation. Or otherwise, you're going to be there to another two hours scrubbing and cleaning. You have to clean as you go. As you're turning around and implementing projects, as you're turning around, you actually have to get creative. So instead of sitting down and saying, all right, I'm going to write 35 standard documents today, realizing a lot of these are going to start getting, getting created as we turn around and need, need them. The heavy lifting is going to really be in a lot of the six plans and uh, for it. A lot of the policy documents for NIST, I have templates, and I'm building them off of, off of the templates and customized. So that makes it a little bit lighter work. It's the, uh, the plans and the standards that's going to probably take the greatest amount of writing to actually do, because those are going to be new cop and a turnaround and have to turn around and create uh, for it. But Jim, the standards documents that you haven't written about 20, mm -hmm. can you buy your way out of that problem or can you go online and possibly? Some, there are some, some that I can, can turn around and, and, and grab uh, for it um, of, of wording from one document and insert it into another. For example, the goals and objectives, they're going to be pretty much the same for it. So I can copy from, from others and then start inserting it uh, into it as. Uh, but there is some area where I can turn around and yeah, Rob Peter to pay Paul, and then potentially I can turn around and yeah, Rob Peter to pay Paul, and then potentially potentially buy some documents as I go. Another thing is I could actually request. I'm bringing up a whole new system. I can request that the vendor help create and write those. Yes. I don't have to do it. I have a word processor too, that I can slide that into the documentation. Do it. I have a word processor too that I can slide that into the documentation as well. At least having the difficult sections of that may be written by the well. Hey, what, what we were talking about when we wrote the STP originally mm -hmm. was, um, because there wasn't an IT director, um, because there wasn't an IT director, yep. and so it's taking stuff and go with it. It was either getting funding to hire a consultant to come in and do but an, another idea was to utilize uh, 
students at universities and students at universities in internship programs, whether that's paid or unpaid, don't know, but um, you know, there's a fee. In there. Our local here that have IT type programs, and we could potentially leverage them in helping develop some of these, get some vision, some of these, get some vision, and then they get a grade out of it. Good idea. Many hands mean light work. <laughs> I'm, a big, I'm a, always a big proponent of, of that. So it doesn't have to be done by one person. I think mean, it's a very astute point. <coughs> Uh, will be very, very helpful in almost all of this document. Mm -hmm. And I know, especially the idol as well. So, do you, do you have problems getting access to that, the sources? No. <laughs> and it also comes from your employer. Some of it can be re 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 recycled uh, through that as, as well. So, <coughs> remind me. <laughs> Where it comes from. So, if I was going to start looking at a, a little bit more of a decomposition, we decomposition. We have at first in the in the policy document. This would be page number. Let's see, I think it brings out number eleven. Where our goal is, the city shall provide a secure and where our goal is the city shall provide a secure and reliable and effective information technology environment for its employees and managers. And then breaking it out onto objective number one, expand the functionality of information systems and utilization of new technologies, all the while minimizing system information systems and utilization of new technologies, all the while minimizing system outages and negative impacts to government services. And previously, they specified develop a technology infrastructure plan. And then as we go, education <coughs> plan. Yep. I'm not saying top of my head, but I'm also not turning around and putting my glasses on either. Uh, so the first one is develop a technology infrastructure plan. And here I actually broke this out into the Three components of building out a server plan, a structure plan, and then a storage plan. And as we would see within the activities, within the bullet points, the first four are almost always the, the same. And this com comes to an alignment where what we were previously asking in the plan, in the plan, was first to turn around and in year one perform a needs analysis and then perform an audit of the existing features, statuses, and capabilities to know what your current environment is. Design the components to meet the new design capabilities, hopefully based upon the needs analysis. Design the components to meet the new design capabilities, hopefully based upon the needs analysis. And then if we went year agnostic on it, uh, they would then say prioritize the plan components, develop an implementation of key uh, performance indicators to track improve improvements, Plan the adoption and there's to track improve improvements. Plan the adoption and then the third year they recommended of actually doing the actual implementation. So if I became year agnostic and said, all right, I don't care when you do it, because if you want to implement it the same year, understanding come into play that we can't always say year one, year two, year three, because now we've taken financial considerations out of the equation. Uh, I, if I went to year agnostic, I would say, yep, I agree. The first step we should do with an activity would be to perform the needs analysis. Very similar. Uh, the needs analysis should be driven by the business and the services requirements of the city, which is very similar to what I have on, on page 11 under the old activity. Then we'd perform an inventory and audit of existing equipment, status features, capabilities, identifying any integration points between components. That's very important also for applications. We perform a gap analysis of the requirements, components, features, and capabilities. Create a new architecture based upon the anticipated operational environment and need capabilities based upon previous need analysis. 
and then develop stakeholder critical success factors need analysis, and then develop stakeholder critical success factors and key performance indicators to help track the progress of improvements, similar to where we had in year two of, of track the, the KPIs. And then I actually then call out and first, and then I actually then call out and the first book four bullet points is going to be pretty much the same for a lot of the plan. It's going to be the same same text, wash and repeat. But then it comes down to what type of referencing standards would I normally want to put into an infrastructure plan? Determine active directory architecture and standards. How am I building out my AD? Kind of important if you're building servers. What's your device and network host name resolution standards? What's your infrastructure equipment standards? What's your hardware standards? What's your operating system standards? What are you going to be your virtualization platform? So devices, it would be hardware, laptop, and desktop. Uh, any server management performance standards to turn around and monitor your, uh, your, your uh, environment. And then the last is the very similar to what we have on page 11 with the last implementation steps. Create a project implementation schedule outlining the required risk and funding. And then implement, once you actually have your plan and your funding, implement the infrastructure ar uh, architecture in alignment to capital resource funding. Real quick. Um, what you've just outlined there is the plan for server infrastructure, correct? That would be for server, yes. So in this plan-based server infrastructure, Right. That would be for server, yes. So in this plan, based upon those bullet points, you've incorporated the standards within there, so it's not a separate document. You can reference it. The, the doc, you, you can fold those documents either into the plan or you can reference them as separate. Now, those documents either into the plan or you can reference them as separate. Now, it's optional to the person writing it. Do yeah. you want to put it all in one one plan, or do you want to take those sections, say, all right, I'm going to make this a smaller document, and these standards will now just be links, hyperlinks to other documents that I'm creating. I'm bringing it up is the ability to maintain this amount of information mm -hmm. over time. And having change in personnel, change in standards, change in technologies, it is going to be a whirlwind of being able to do that if it's not done in an automated fashion of some sort. So your, your network out of date the minute you write it. Um, because the IP addressing scheme code will probably be identified. Um, I, I just I want to be thoughtful with you mm -hmm. about, I applaud the work that you've outlined here. However, the ability to execute it and maintain it for future resources that come into the org. But yet a network diagram may be an inclusion of the standard. It isn't necessarily the standard itself. No. Uh, that was an example. And, and um, an IP but but um, this will need to be freshed at a minimum annually on yes. each of the plans that you outline to make sure that each of the reference. Well, the plans probably if you went through a merger or an acquisition, suddenly your needs can dramatically change yep. through something of that dramatic. Um, for government, I don't foresee at least being here for six years. Uh, I don't really see the plans changing that much because the organization is not that good. Do you think at some point to be able to say, here's an example, maybe based upon the risk management uh, or register, to say, here's an example, one thing of just what I told you, that the way it looks. And we can get a, a feel for it um, without you know, going down the path of saying, okay, let's do it all. But well, we can, we can, we can definitely like create one, one one plan mm -hmm. and then create maybe one or two based upon existing information standards yep. documents so they actually see this is what the template yep. and what the deliverable is probably going to turn around and look like. Just one or maybe two would be great. And and based upon what the risk register and and based upon what the risk register is telling us on what are the most critical areas, that is a suggestion that I'd have of making sure that we approach it with that in mind. It's great that you've got the detail here. Great that you've got the detail here. Uh, making it usable and functional is going to be easier once we see the exam. Yes.
The next piece would obviously be the same thing. Do the same thing, but instead of server, network. Again, the four bullet first four again the four bullet first four bullet points will be exactly the same. Then as part of the network infrastructure, what would be the some of the standards? Logical and physical local area network diagrams. Like I said, we can turn around and, and reference that maybe to an automated system. WAN and uh, network and, and uh, network gateway network diagrams, network equipment standards, cabling standards, IP addressing and DHCP standards, not necessarily the IPs, but how are you going to build them out? Uh, routing and security segmentation standards, wireless and wired network authentication and protocol standards, telephone and voicemail standards, network configuration and management standards, and telephone configuration. And again, create a project implementation schedule and then implement the architecture when you get funding. Last one would be the storage uh, for the standards, the SAN, SAN and storage network diagrams, data classification and storage tier, tiering standards. Here we are going, how are you going to classify your storage data? Storage equipment standards, fiber channel addressing and name resolution standards. You can also make that ice fuzzy. SAN manager channel addressing and name resolution standards. You can also make that ice fuzzy. SAN management and performance standards, capacity analysis standards, and backup and data recovery standards. And again, project implementation schedule, and then implement as you get capital and resource funding. So that would actually get capital and resource funding. So that would actually replace everything that was on page 11 for the technology plan. And I move on 15, where we actually have strategy 1.1.2, develop an application plan. And they, again, very similar, very first four bullet points, small little changes on the, on, uh, the application portfolio instead of that will create a new application portfolio based upon the anticipated operational environment and needed capabilities. But first two bullet points are pretty much exactly the same as what we were just looking at. And then again, critical stakeholder KPI metrics because that's similar to what we have here over on page. And then if I would be creating an application plan, what would some of the application standards would we want to look at here? I would actually break it out into enterprise and department. You have enterprise applications, and then you have department applications. And the standards you want to specify is probably going to be between the two because the scope is going to be different. Uh, so, what would be some standards I'd be interested in? Email, centralized MSSQL database services, file print search and scan services, GIS services. Enterprise Resource Planning and Financial Services, which we use BSNA here. The Property Tax Reporting Services, that could go away because that is going to become a shared service, although we might still want to have that in there um, because you're still going to have to manage your cloud services even though it's a shared service. And then any Document Management and OCR services. And then for the departments, uh, individual departments, uh, election services, anything tied to WEC, even though that is outsourced and shared, probably want to start documenting some of those standards. Uh, those are already written. Uh, VPW, fleet management software, which is fleet already written. Uh, VPW, fleet management software, which is fleet wise in the fuel distribution system. Uh, health department, uh, they have a cloud based appointment scheduling program. Uh, finance, uh, payroll, EDP, again, cloud. And then the fire department, uh, again, cloud. And then the fire department, uh, you have some of their dispatch metrics for Phoenix WDA, uh, EMS medical billing, uh, which is an image trend, a cloud-based service. Fire station and inventory management uh, software, which is Firehouse, which eventually will be going to the nation, uh, which is station alerting. 
and then engineering computer aided design uh, which is AutoCAD down in engineering uh, the municipal courts, uh, you have your case management system, uh, which is TIPS, and then in the police department, which is our largest one's plate scanning, citations, computer-aided dispatch, records management, all that's Pro Phoenix, video storage, which is arbitrator and watch guard right now, and their proprietor VPN, water utility, application uh, deployment and imaging standards, and application and interfacing data exchange standards. Uh, with it. Exactly what the documents would look like for the departmental standards of applications, I'm not quite sure yet on that, um, how we would exactly fold, fold that in. It would be similar to what I perceive on more of your standard operating procedures and probably more on your standard, I perceive on more of your standard operating procedures and probably more on your standard configuration is where that would probably align to and maybe how you do data interchanging between other systems. That's where I probably see going into there. And that could begin to become a little bit of an overlap on the actual install in, in, uh, installation document. It could begin to become a little bit of an overlap on the actual install in, in, uh, installation documentation that uh, you would have as well. So I had to make sure that that would be written up at a higher level uh, for it. But that, well, again, those documents, a lot of writing, Turn around and do it, but once written, it becomes the training procedures. And here, I rely heavily on the vendors to help write a lot of the documentation, especially for the vendor specific programs that may be actually out there. So that would be transforming what we see on page 15 more specifically with, with even clearer delivery, very specific to the technology that we have implemented as a. Here, I kind of wish we were. Raj was here to lend a little bit more insight on it from a development standpoint. Any questions on the application? Are you legitimizing the department say if it's in here? It becomes a standard and that's what we currently and, use as the application. And based upon our previous conversations, if it's not, it's not. Correct. So if you wanted to bring in a new version of let's say AutoCAD. For engineering, I'd say no. Our standard document, our standard software that we use for this purpose is auto. Standard document, our standard software that we use for this purpose is AutoCAD. It yep. is our standard right now. If you want to revise the standard and look at other the stuff, process. we can do that. But this is why we have it, and this is why it's configured the way it's configured today. Yep. That's why the process of modifying this configured the way it's configured. That's why the process of modifying this, these documents becomes very important so that yes. people cannot just say, we'll just make it standard. <laughs> that, that, that is absolutely true. And I think that's a strong reason for actually putting it in there. Yes. In training purposes. Because people come, people go. This now shows the line of reasoning of why things are the way they are. Okay, application. Then we have policy number one. Systems will be implemented with the aim of increasing work without uh, impeding local user flexibility. And to me, this looks like this was one of those goals that was replications was not tier two or tier three system. That we had applications that were running on the desktop. I'll pick a good old fashioned, remember old semantic act for the contact management system. And everyone had their own local act database or their own access database, app local act database or their own access database application on their desktop. And it wasn't SQL based, it wasn't centralized over in, in the data center. The app existed on each and every single desktop. That's kind of where I'm reading this at this point. And I can tell you that's not what we have desktop. That's kind of where I'm reading this at this point. And I can tell you that's not what we have today. That may have been in 2007, but almost every single application that we have today is tier two. Even fleet wise out in the uh, uh, in the DPW is client server. 
off of it. We don't have any applications really that exist only beyond Microsoft Office applications that exist only on the desktop. Almost all of them are talking either to a cloud-based service or turning around and talking over to um, uh, a, a server or database. And why this really transformed is things are done to the web. <laughs> Prior to everything going and becoming web-enabled, yeah, you had a lot of thick applications running on the desktop. But nowadays, if, if it's going to exist, most of the time your front-end interface is a web browser. Even if it is a client server. And I think you're right with when it was in the also some of the mapping programs mm -hmm. where those resided on any level kind of mapping. I think that was so I, my suggestion would be just to get rid of this and no longer pertinent to our environment. To our environment. Any other thoughts? No? Going back to the, now the numbering strategy gets a little weird here because of now eliminating a number and such, but if I am correct, it's 1.1.5. Correct, it's 1.1.5 that we actually have. <coughs> and it would be then to develop a disaster recovery and business continuity plan. It is also found way in section 9.2 is a reference for it. So they referenced having an emergency management plan, but they never really said you since we're talking about, instead of putting it in section 9.2, since the main goal that we're actually dealing with right now is to create a reliable, secure, and effective implementation technology with an objective that, while minimizing system outage, of instead of moving it all the way to the back of the document, Let's move it forward. Since we're talking about plans right now, to begin with, what better place to turn around and put the, the disaster recovery plan than, than right here? Uh, so very similar to what we had before. You're doing a needs analysis as to identify systems and or application restoration requirements, recovery point objects, recovery time objectives, and service restoration policies based upon the needs of city operations. This is where we're getting to beginning the foundation of the needs analysis of the gap. Develop stakeholder metrics, and then create or update the following reference standards. There's only one disaster recovery and business continuity standards. After you get done with creating all of those wonderful standards for your applications, you can probably turn around and found that standards document fairly easily based upon the configuration information that you have in the other documentation schedule. Um, here, based to create a remote DR site with similar infrastructure capabilities, identify cloud or shared hosted services that might be used for primary or disaster recovery operations. Obviously, before you can build out a DR environment, those have to be exist. You have to have those platforms available, have those platforms available, and then implement a BCP architecture with synchronization, failover, failover and failback testing in alignment to capital and resource funding. So that would be creating a formalized BCP plan being now brought forward to the front of the actual strategic technology plan, being now brought forward to the front of the actual strategic technology plan. This is extremely important. And that one also is on the risk list. Then we finally get to strategy 1.2. Develop a secure that too. Develop a security plan, which is what we have been talking about with NIST uh, probably now for the last year and a half. And here it's perform a needs analysis on the current environment and, and departmental services. So based upon that needs analysis, the follow security NIST policy platforms, and these are all the 14 NIST policy documents that we have that have been re referenced both within our NIST framework and also within the risk register. So um, I won't go through all 14 of these again, but we have two of, two of the 14 sitting on my desk and then the, the security training plan. The four of them are written right now uh, as we will be going, going through these. Um, but these we fleshed out as part of the security plan. And then, um, 
Then the following to the NIST framework document, there's going to be some standards that are tied to our security devices. Firewall perimeter and security standards, VPN and terminal services standards, client advanced threat management and endpoint protection standards, email security and anti-phishing standards, since I'm going to Mimecast, that would be a great wonder. Email security and anti-phishing standards, since I'm going to Mimecast, that would be a great one to write. Network and device vulnerability management standards, network device security patching and deployment standards, SCIM standards, security assessment and penetration testing standards, and two-factor authentication standards. And penetration testing standards and two-factor authentication standards. And then again, the two consistent create a rolling implementation project schedule and implement the architectural in alignment to resource and capital funding. So now we have another plan in there, the security plan. Objective 1.3.1 is to create a remote wireless access technology and systems data plan uh, that will provide real-time information for the city and employees where work is performed at the point of origin and retrieve from, from remote locations. Again, I think this is a little stretched in time, so my recommendation is to kill it. One, because the vast majority of this is going to be talked about in the network infrastructure plan, which we have now clearly split out as part of the technology infrastructure plan, but it also comes to the point that at the time this was written, we had very, very, very slow bandwidth at our remote offices. I'm not even sure we even had the WAN back in, in 2007. So at the time, they may have been running in completely and totally isolated mode and then had to make copy and synchronization in completely and totally isolated mode and then had to make copy and synchronization plans to turn around and, and do work and then bring it up and put it up into the central office. Today we have 200 and 400 megabit WAN links over there. Each office has its own wireless network. They can megabit WAN links over there. Each office has its own wireless network. They can get to the, wire, to the wired network over here at, at City Hall. The environment is the remote offices today are no longer isolated and standalone. They're very tightly coupled in infrastructure here at City Hall. And anything that you can do at one of the remote offices can also be done at yet another remote office. We had a situation this summer where the power was down over at the DPW. And you can probably remember the storm that came in and took all the electricity. We didn't have a generator. So the staff had to go over to the water utility and do all their work over at the water utility. Well, the WAN was up, up and running at this point where, yeah, everything that they could have done at the DPW, they can just move to another office, log on to the computer over there, and do their work. So there's no need to do digital capture systems or synchronization any longer because they're working in real time. And as we start building in a fiber WAN, I think that it becomes more and more and more of a, of a moot point. So my recommendation is, is, I do believe this one is redundant and it's a little on the is, is I do believe this one is redundant and it's a little on the stale side. So I think. Yeah, I think this is more like fire uh, capture information. Fire department, so they had tablets that they were going out and tablets they were going out and then they'd come back and they'd sync them back in which they're doing today yeah and they're doing it through cloud services yeah uh, so there was there was some activity that was going on like that mm -hmm. at least cameras and so on that were remote digital capture yeah nowadays a lot of it is going real time yeah yeah any any thoughts of not killing it I just want the clarification, I guess. The uh, comment that you have on page 21 of this document um, references, uh, you do have something that's not struck. Extend operational information services to one device is college application. So is that staying and you're going to be writing and that would be another plan that you That's the objective. So okay. the objective will stay there. We're just killing the strategy.
So the striking we know, but the, the new objective is, is what's stated there. And then you have the detail that you have for these other objectives. Um, you don't need to through that. Yeah, you, that's one thing we, we've seen right now. Every single time you have an objective, you need detail. You'll see it in other areas of the document. Every single time you have an objective, you need detail. You'll see it in other areas of the document. You can just state the objective, and you don't have to have strategy or activity. Yeah. One more comment. The, uh, it's pretty powerful, though. The mobile device, cloud, and shared applications, remote offices. What is being replaced, as you know, applications, remote offices. What is being replaced, as you know, of what was once on the desktop, in fact, is now cloud. And anybody can download um, a lot um, as an individual down to their local workstation. And mm -hmm. that all of a sudden becomes a very powerful data rich resource. You. So I don't want to negate the importance of the individual being able to get access to their own cloud applications and utilize it as though it was a fat client on their workstation. And I don't know if it would fall within that this goal right here of being able to they stay. Should standardized cloud services to turn around and do it that the security policies will say no, you have yeah. to only use authorized cloud services. You just can't turn around, log on to a cloud service, you use because it's personal, to your own account, and then start downloading things onto your own, own point. You are breaking security standards. So you're only supposed to yeah. use authorized software from the city. Okay, so the application section would identify the, the uh, appropriate cloud services Correct. that individuals should be downloading in order to do Correct. Department level as well as enterprise. Correct. Should be downloading in order to do that. Correct. Department level as well as enterprise. Correct. All right. And if they need a cloud service that isn't there, it should be added to the application area. All right. Any other questions? Then on page 22, uh, this I can tell just by the um, the way this was worded. This strikes me as is probably is a lot of text that Mark put in here. Mark put in here, uh, where he he was discussing uh, basically the the intention of the development plan, and then gave some recommended suggestions on potential projects that could be developed based upon those, those potential discussions. And I would see our, some of this has already been done uh, since, since 2007. Some of it is not even important anymore. For example, report writing and crystal reports. Mm -hmm. We don't do report writing and crystal reports. We do it either in the SNA report writer or we do it the SQL reporting services uh, for it. Um, that's going to be in the cloud or it's, or it's going to be in, in the SNA. Uh, over it. My recommendation, even though I put a kill with a question mark, you can leave it in there if so desired from it, but it's it's interesting, but I don't think it's essential. Mm -hmm. I agree, Jim. I don't think um, potential. Mm -hmm. I agree, Jim. I don't think um, potential projects make sense in this document because it's so dynamic mm -hmm. and things change so quickly. I think you address that in your overall, you know, we're going to offer services and applications to as best as our ability and leave it at that. This to as best as our ability and leave it at that. This, this also struck me as we're trying to create a high level document and this suddenly goes and diving deep into the pool right. of, of low level goals. Yep. Any heartache and pain if we don't remove it? I, mean, I think it's much better to handle it kind of like you did on page 16, where for example, enterprise application standards, well, if something new does get added, mm -hmm. yep. then it gets added here, not is a list of what ifs that maybe will happen. Put something in here, probably the whole approval process and pricing and budgeting and all that kind of stuff that will have to happen. Reality is in it. I also with think this might have something to do with there wasn't really an IT manager in there and it was fostering ideas. There's a cafeteria of ideas which you might want to implement. 
And since now that we think it really fully formalized here, yeah, I think this was a parking lot of a lot of topics that came up just during the discussion. What about this and what about that? And so threw them in there in perpetuity and now it's kind of over. Uh, strategy number 14, utilize business processes, business process and analytic, da, 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 I'm sorry. Seek, under for, objective 1F4, seek opportunities to document, understand, improve, and automate business processes. Document, understand, improve, and automate business processes. And then the strategy for, for this, if I would w wipe out what they had before, uh, basically of utilizing business analyst techniques in order to understand and document current business processes and further define more processes. I think we can get a little bit more specific on that. And I would rewrite that, utilize business process analyst techniques in order to understand and document current business processes and further define a more effective process. And then under the activities for enterprise categorized application, known as enterprise, then 2.0 diagrams outlining the major business processes used by the application. Decompose each major process diagram into sub-processes, indicating the swim lanes between departments and indicated activities, and when possible, optimize the process and workflow to automate activity. To do that right now, that's on my task list. Do that for BSNA. For that, how are you going to automate that which you do not know? And the easiest way to do that is create the DPMN diagrams uh, for it. It is huge. It's a great activity. It's an intense. Have those DPMN diagrams on there. Oh my God, is it absolutely. Now you actually have your workflows in a diagram that people can see and, and feel and touch, and it makes a huge, huge, huge difference on it. So they were not specific in what they want. This may be too specific. I could knowing that I'm going to take one of our largest applications right now, uh, BSNA, and BPMN diagrams have to be created for that. One time is made available and allows for it. Do you see that being done by the department personnel? Or? The biggest problem is how many people here know to that own diagram? Was that falling on you? Yeah. But that's the problem is who writes it? That, that, that is a very specific skill. Could be outsourced. I could hire a data analyst, a business analyst, and say, this is what I want, so grab a business analyst, and say, this is what I want, so grab a chunk of money. No, I never said what year this has to be done in. We could make that a, a capital or, or an item to turn around and outsource. It doesn't not necessar necessarily have to be done internally. Yeah, I mean, it has to be done internally. Yeah, I mean, in totality here, it's a lot of work. <laughs> and, <Yes>. uh, <laughs> you may be younger than I am, but you're you're, you're going to retire at some point. I, this this retire at some point. I, this this the the concern would be. Um, just like the original STP, it, it's further defined, but it's just on the shelf. I also worry, if I was going to turn around and bring this in, if I would redo what we just did, if I would redo what we just turned around and did with BSNA, and was able to turn around and rescope the deliverables of that project, this would be in that deliverable. So am I, as I'm bringing in new applications, and they're classified, and they're classified not departmental, but enterprise, this has to turn around and actually That then becomes part of the project work on it. So one area is, all right, it doesn't save me for all the stuff that exists, but if someone's going to turn around and bring in a brand new level, you're going to have to do that. And if you don't know your business processes, you're going to have to do some data analysis prior to this, the implementation of that, that system. Or otherwise, you're trying to automate that which you do not understand. 
and that's always the biggest challenge. I don't have the resources, the money to do this level of detail, and to be able to do it with any degree of accuracy or hope to accomplish it. And so skinning it down was always the challenge to get what is mm -hmm. the most meaty areas of the things that we talked about here tonight that we must do that we must get done and, and focus in on those. Um, and there can be additional resources coming, but uh, you're strapped um, with resources to be able to build this out, even, even a tenth of this. Um, and this is like even, even a tenth of this. Um, and this is like another 100% on top of it, the DRL. Oh, yeah. Yep. If I would be turning around and bringing in a college student intern, that's also where I would bring them. Anyone who's actually turning around and uh, turning around and uh, taking uh, any of the um, what is it? Uh, six. Alder Mayor's excuse. So I don't know if people. Uh, anyone that would be, I would turn around and say, yeah, I absolutely want an intern to do it. And we'll give them plenty of raw meat to turn around and and work their uh, their work work their magic as part of that that whole coursework material. Uh, so there it doesn't necessarily have to be a consultant in there. I I don't have to be a skilled one because someone can always work and prove their work uh, on it. But that would be a good area where I would possibly supplement it with. Staffing. Another area that I found very helpful is a company called Infotech, and it breaks down all the components that you just said in the processes, in the processes, and the resources that are required in order to maintain the environment based upon the size of your organization. So Infotech would be um, they use COVID um, in terms of kind of a layout of their framework, but everything that you talked about is embedded in detail there. That I think would be a great resource. Mm -hmm. You talked about is embedded in detail there that I think would be a great resource. Okay. Beyond the concern of staffing, which is a major concern, uh, would you exclude it or keep it? Well, nobody else is doing it. So it has to be done at some level of detail. That's agree. And if it's just the 2B process, which is the first one, and not so much as, I'm sorry, the as is and not the 2B. I'm sorry, the as is and not the 2B. Um, that's where your projects would come in and you would have to have, how are we changing the process and automating it within the context of that project? But if you don't know, if you don't have an understanding, at least documented, about what your processes are now, and how you're functioning, it's good. about what your processes are now, and how you're functioning, it's very hard to train new people that come in and say, this is what we do here, without seeing something. I would also make a very strong argument to say, this is why government doesn't work, especially at the federal level. What government agency really has a full understanding of the federal level? What government agency really has a full understanding of the process of the that may be, and probably very true, uh, but I'm not sure that this uh, domain of IT this Oh, that was my first question. Who's going to do it if right. IT doesn't? Right. And, and if we had a project management office, I would say, yeah, that, that should be within there as part of the business. Balance, but as part of the business balance, but <laughs> there's no other area well, that just because the IT director has a skill set to do it doesn't make it appropriate mm -hmm. that he does. True, yeah. Where would you recommend that would be placed somewhere in the business? And, and, and as different, but um, <clears throat> they know their process, they should be able to. Excellent. 
It is, I am not a claim to be an expert on VPM M 2.0. Is there a light version? Is she going to contact to, to tackle? Uh, you make a base, basically you just make flow chart yeah. for it. But the way I see it, after being through it, I find the VPMN <clears throat> is just an extension of the flow chart. Once you understand the notation of it, yeah. you can create a flow chart just as quickly as you can a VPMN, VPMN diagram. It's just understanding the vernacular. I mean, so I think you know it's already been stated tonight. I think from an IT and security perspective. You have to prioritize all this other work based on the risk register. Yeah. And to me, <laughs> this is lower. And to me, <laughs> this is lower. Yeah. Agreed. Yep. Yep. We are planned a little bit higher than this one. Would you include these activities or would you just you can take you can that out? I mean, I mean, I can keep it in there. I just don't have to do it immediately. I, I can put it in there. I just don't have to do it immediately. I, I can put it lower on the list of my, my to-do list. Well, I think that you identify the plans by priority. Yeah. And, so mm -hmm. this, and that's kind of the preamble to say, based upon our mm -hmm. ability to do things, here's the order in which we're going to do it. Yes. Yep. The only because it supports disaster recovery business continuity. It's understanding the, sorry. It's understanding your business and how your business functions and also turning around and making improvements, changes. That would, that would almost seem to be outside IT. IT. It would normally, but the, the business units don't have a solid understanding of process re-engineering. There's no other governance part of the organization, right? IT governance. That's what it becomes a skill set that just is not in the areas of management of these particular. Does the health director understand enough about process re-engineering that she can turn around and look at her processes being used in the health department and then saying, oh, here's where I can now turn around and optimize these processes within health. One would hope they would have that, but I also realize that's not hope. They would have that, but I also realize that's not their main skill set. Her main skill set is in nursing and, and, and health management. It's not in business process engineering. Right, but you flip that around and and to the point that was made earlier, and to the point that was made earlier, the function of the IT director mm -hmm. is to manage and IT. implement the information technology. Not to re, not to point out inefficiencies in other people's workflows, and help op in other people's workflows, and help optimize them. It's great if you have that skill. It's great if the, the organization, being City of Franklin, can, can bring contractors, consultants in to, to do that. But in the end, um, it's how they're using and touching the technology. And, um, it's how they're using and touching the technology that's more in your in your direct area, and I'm. That's also one reason why I included it for enterprise only and not department. I understand. Who is tapped to do projects that for the business that include IT capability? Business departments in conjunction with IT. It would be the department heads come forward they, with a request of an initiative or something they want to have. Or the assistant chief of police would then turn around and say, hey, we're looking at this initiative. We want to implement new security cameras all throughout the area. We think this is going to touch IT. Where do you think we need your assistance the most? Who PMs those initiatives? Their own. Inadequate yeah. Individual yeah. Okay, so then it goes back earlier that this process, unfortunately, is decentralized Correct. by the organizations like the police department to optimize their function. And sometimes it comes out of the capital request project, becomes mm -hmm. the, uh, yep. becomes mm -hmm. the, uh, yep. If you don't have the funding for it, you're not going to turn around and get it, and you hence need to justify the, uh, 
the actual projects, the appropriations process yeah. kind of directs to some degree what projects are undertaken. So, so I was just thinking the resourcing of the project undertaken. So, so I was just thinking the resourcing of the project. That kind of answers the question. Well, that my company comes stuff, don't do any. Typically, it's the IT manager, 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 whatever it wants it. General accounting or general ledger, like we have the example of nursing, the efficiency that those areas have is that technology do. Mm -hmm. So you really need the IT manager and you need to very find the process. So even if you don't get to this right away, it does seem to incorporate the habit vendor, and it could be depending on whatever process it is, that department should write it. But I do think IT has to be involved because they just don't know what the technology is to do. But, but, it's something new coming along. But does IT know the application well enough to opine? I mean, yes, I, I can understand if it's this, and then you do this, and then we print the report, and then we do this. I mean, that's really application layer business process. And I don't know that Jim or anyone in our IT organization understands the application of that, that layer. It? Who supports the app? The vendor. With the uh, the department then says, I got a problem here, I need this I change. assume the vendor, right? I mean, if, unless it's to some degree it's a vendor, face. but um, I don't know BSNA is as well as I knew Govern, but when I had to turn around and support Govern, yeah, I was down to the point to point, screen by screen, field by field, report by report, down to the point to point, screen by screen, field by field, report by report. I need this report changed. No one knows how to go into Crystal and change the report. I have to then go into the report and start changing it. Changing the fields, changing the definitions, changing the parameterized data. Yeah, IT is literally to that level. Yeah, IT is literally to that level. Well, I don't see any harm in leaving it. No, here that's at true. The moment, right? We always can, and that's why God put erasers on pencils. Yeah. But prioritization of the activities you described this evening is so critical. Okay, with that, believe it or not, is now done with goal number one, which actually is a very major and large portion of the strategic technology. Out of all the goals, goal number one was actually the hardest to get through. The work. Uh, basically, it was an approval of, all right, here's what I have, and do you see anything with the rewrites in the red line here that you disagreed with that would probably need to turn around and be revised? So uh, I didn't have that much. Of, uh, I didn't have that much of that, that looked like needed to, to turn around and be revised. If you want a second look at it, you can email it. Email me the, the changes, and then I can add it to the red line document, and at the end of the day, I will take all my revisions and make a formal document, and this thing will look considerably different than what a formal document, and this thing will look considerably different than what it actually looks today. We'll have a brand new strategic technology plan based upon all the red line and all the discussion. I think some of the flavor that we talked about was Keeping it uh, we talked about was keeping it simpler initially and being able to have it replicated throughout all the other plans and then showing us a couple of examples of it just to mm -hmm. provide guidance on that. That will make more sense to me at least of how the rest of the plan would flow. <laughs> yes. And coming up with a vision for it. So th thank you very much for your time and your consideration. It was a good amount of time and effort spent on, on that discussion. Very welcome. I just had two other points, sorry. Um, I don't know where this would go, but the approval of the plan, the plan will be approved this way, and these are the steps that we're going to get uh, approval to legitimize what we've done. Number two is change management of the plan once it's approved. So here are the steps that need to, and that needs to be documented, I believe, within the plan. The, the overall plan, uh, so that people know, know um, what to do. I think it's at the end. I'll double check of this. Yeah. Oh, I have to remember. But all right. Thanks.
because there will be a lot of challenges, um, I would believe, to to what you've written from the organization. Organization. Yeah. Yeah. We'll look for those actions. Norm, you're not suggesting business units fight back with IT, are you? Wow. Maybe you tell me to. You tell me to. Okay. Any further discussion on item number four? Otherwise, we will move on to item number five, which has a motion. For us to enter closed session, I'll read it. Um, enter closed session, I'll read it. Um, so this is a motion to move into closed session in order to enter discussion on the following agenda topic. Review the NIST security policy identification and access control policy. Review the NIST security policy and access control policy. Review the NIST security policy incident response policy, review discuss changes to the IT security risk slash watch register. Technology Commission may enter closed session for this subject matter item. Um, pursuant to Council Statutes section 19.85, subsection 1, comment at B, to consider strategy for crime prevention and the implementation of program and policy and tools, therefore, for crime prevention, in relation thereto for the protection of the city's technical and information infrastructure and the city officials, employee, employees, and public who use the system, and also pursuant to Wisconsin Statute Section 19.85, subsection 1, Romanet E, for com competition and bargaining reasons, protection program, and this subject matter, subject matters, Items and the uh, investing of public funds in relation thereto, and to re enter open session at the same place thereafter to act on such matters discussed. Can I get a motion? A move. Can I get a motion? A move. Do we have a second? A second. John. Uh, all those in favor to enter closed section, session, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Speaker Mosel, please. Speaker Mosel, please. Take a roll call. Okay. Uh, Chair Greg Stroig? Aye. Alderman Dan Mayer is left. So we're here. Laura Volusia? James Rayberger? Aye. Keith Sarama is not here. Laura McKesson? Sarama is not here. Laura McKesson? Here. Doug Harney? Aye. The core is not here. Uh, motion has carried, and we will enter closed session now. I'll turn off the recording. Close the door. Yum. I'll turn off the recording. Close the door. Yum. So we have a motion to move back into open session and proceed with the discussion. And the items discussed. Get a motion. Our motions. Give me a second. Our motions. Give me a second. I'll second. John. John gave us a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. I didn't write anything out this week, either for the director's note or the technical issues uh, at this point. Uh, the only thing I would note for uh, that was noteworthy is um, the implementation of TELUS, which was supposed to schedule to go live on September 3rd by Milwaukee County. Uh, they had to do this, unfortunately, for all 17 municipalities. And uh, the reason for that is Phoenix, uh, who's the maker of the CAD, and tell the software all of this rides on top of, uh, suddenly said, no, you need to change your base foundational code. So instead of version 2020 hot fix for March hot fixes, now have to turn around and implement 
the August 25th hot fixes in order to turn around and run this code, which means all 17 municipalities who are going live tomorrow <laughs> has to turn around have a lot of people concerned at this point of the county promised that we would not have to do lockstep change management in order to run this, this product, and guess what? We might be looking more and more at that. Uh, so hopefully that's not going to be a big problem. They also noted uh, 2020 early, that normally they give you a full two years, if not three years, before they retire the previous version of the software. In Phoenix's build and numbering conventions, it's 2020 is their prior version of software. The current one is 2020 R2, Vision 2. The current one is 2020 R2, Vision 2, which is a 2021, actually. And they're coming out soon with Phoenix 2022. Um, when they do 2022, everyone has to be off of Phoenix 2020, which means even though we just upgraded 2020, which means even though we just upgraded 2020 back in March of this year, they're deprecating Phoenix 2020 now on February, this is a lot of numbers here, February of 2022. So basically in four to five months, basically in four to five months from now, we yet have to do yet another upgrade of Phoenix to a new version. And that version now has to be compliant with the TELUS adapter and the code as well. So I was hoping that we could do a leap of going from 2020 to 2022. So requirements would tell us if they're going to allow us to do that. I may have to do this double hop in order to finally get over to the final version of the product. So that is unfortunate, but that is basically how the vendors are coding their software at this time and putting in the project requirements and requirements. Never the project. That is the only item that I have right now for the technology. Try to jump in here. Anything more on the uh, security problem we had last time? And even with using a tool that was given to us by the DHS to turn around and do additional scans yeah. uh, out on the network, no one from the 17 municipalities, I've talked to four of them, uh, no one's found anything. Uh, on it. So it was a, rather unusual that they decided to do it the way that they did. So it was a, rather unusual that they decided to do it the way that they did when they could have done far more damage. But I guess in, in some cases we we were lucky. They wanted to make a message up there. Mm -hmm. But I also kind of questioned maybe some of the technical skill sets of the hackers. That they they knew what they knew, but the skill sets of the hackers. That. They, they knew what they knew, but they didn't know beyond that, which is kind of unfortunate. How's Mindcast? Uh, I am right now on version 6 out of 10 steps with the implementation. Uh, I'm working with a company called ESO. Uh, I'm working with a company called ESO, e, EPSO System. Uh, who they, they've outsourced this. To. We had a one-hour uh, conversation already. We swung our DKIM records. And DMARC records over, and now I've got some data extracts to turn around and do uh, our over, and now I've got some data extracts to turn around and do uh, our next workout session is going to be Friday. So, and I've already had my user accounts imported on. So it's coming along nicely. I'm hoping probably within the next two weeks of actually having it running. Ready for All right. Uh, future agenda items are listed on the there. We, we already have locked in our future agenda item for October, and that's the yeah. policy procedure for IR. Wednesday, 6 p.m. right here. Motion for adjournment. Second. 